We be live. Let me know how the audio is so that we could get started today. Oh, wait. Let me change my name to English. I had a Persian show, so that's why my name is in Persian right now. Let me just fix that. There we go. All right. <clears throat> tell me. Tell me if uh, my audio is good because today we are going to be reviewing what I assume to be now based on scripture to be potentially, and we could decide that here together, in multiple shows, like this is something that I'm going to be focusing on for the next decade or so, um, and even more, maybe I don't know. Um, I am, I think, like I'm changing my perspective on what is the most violent religion when it comes to just just pure scripture. Okay, and I could tell you, I myself uh, have not. There. There are ways that I think that it's Hinduism instead of Islam, but then that depends on multiple factors, okay? Today, we're going to go read the Gita, uh, the Bhagavad Gita. I'm just going to refer to Gita because I don't want to... Yeah, and I'm going to tell you that why, why I think just the Gita alone. And again, I know that the Gita is... From all the scripture in Hinduism, the Gita, as in as in Hindu for Hinduism today, is the most popular one, right? And it's believed to be the word of God, specifically Krishna. Okay. I know earlier scriptures were more foundational in in Hinduism and more direct revelations of God, but Earlier Hinduism was very different from Hinduism today, anyways. Right? You know, well, I mean, not very different, but Hinduism is hard to define. But um, what we recognize as Hinduism today is, at least from a myth perspective, and theological perspective, and symbolic perspective, hovers around gods like. Uh, the the tr Hindu Trinity, the uh, Shiva, Brahma, and Vishnu, okay, and Krishna being a reincarnation of Vishnu. Um, earlier Hinduism was Indra and Igni, right? So if anybody wants to tell you that Gita is not as serious as the what, earlier scripture in Hinduism, you have to let them know by that argument, Shiva, Brahma, and Vishnu would not be major gods in modern Hinduism, right? What Hinduism, as we recognize today, the most popular scripture as it is is the Gita, the most recognized one as the book of Hindus. I know there's many other ones, right? I mean, I know the Gita is a part of another bigger book, but that's the most that's the core, that's the most popular core of it, right? And when most people, by the way, I'm so glad that Katie is here. So, Katie, I need you to. Uh, confirm with me. Oh, no, oh, I am also very glad that um, queer Indian atheist is here because I want you to guys. Uh, I want you guys go subscribe to this channel because a lot of the information I have here is with the help of a friend and also the the queer Indian atheist channel. So please go and subscribe to that channel for uh, more information. Uh, make sure you do that because we don't have um, any other atheist channel that is focusing on Hinduism like we had one and now it's that channel is inactive so we do need to support channels like that right so by the way um Katie if I say anything wrong uh correct me please I, that would be very much appreciated um and in, in everybody else also that might disagree with me please like tell me what you think I will try to pay attention to the live chat okay so it's amazing that one the religion a lot of people that are apps Ex, 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 ex Abrahamic religions like ex and ex Muslim, ex Christian, ex Jewish, you know, um, or people that are more familiar with Abrahamic religions who are now atheists consider Eastern religions to be more mellow, more uh, peaceful, um, more like hippy dippy, let's hold hand and meditate and sing and uh. You know, sing kumbaya, and it's just like you know, it just it just it's the last, it's a way of life, it's a philosophy, it's meditation. Read the Gita, 
this is an instruction book for mass genocide, okay? In a way that Islam and Christianity have never advocated for. Never advocated for. Like, is the, the most popular book in Hinduism is a direct incitement to violence. Unapologetically. And with, with zero excuse required. And I'm going to go through this uh, text with you guys. And I will explain to you why I think the Gita, when it comes to advocating violence, is, is worse than the Quran and the Hadith combined. Okay? And you guys, I want you to see if you agree with me or not. Okay? So to just give you some context about what the Gita is supposed to be. All right? So we have Krishna. Um, Krishna who is acting like he's not Krishna. You know, like pretending that he's a charioteer. Right? With this other prince guy, Arjun. There are a lot of characters here. I don't want to like go through every single one of them. The story is, is, is very complicated. There's a lot of people. The main two characters. The entire Gita is just dialogue, okay? A dialogue before a battle. Like, I don't know if people understand. It. I thought that I thought the dialogue between Krishna and Arjun. So the, the main characters here are Krishna and Arjun. So please keep that in mind, okay? And I thought the dialogue between Krishna and Arjun was part of the Gita. Apparently, no. Apparently, that's the entire the entirety of Gita is a pre-battle dialogue between a deity and a prince. Okay? And what what Krishna's and again, this is believed to be by Hindus the words of Krishna. One of the reincarnations of Vishnu. Okay, so he's a god, he's a deity here, but he's also a reincarnation of the most important god. Um, the, I think among the Trinity, and I, I know like this is a very Abrahamic mindset of me to refer to the three most important gods in Hinduism as the Trinity. However, it's three of them, so it makes sense to call them a Trinity. Come at me. Um, you know, the, the three of them, Vishnu is the most important one, followed by Shiva, and the least important one, even though he's the creator one, is Brahma. He's like the He's like he's like the holy the Brahma is like the holy ghost of the of their trinity. Nobody gives a crap about him. Yeah, nobody even worships him except in one temple. One temple. He has one temple. Um. Anyways. Yeah. So, so Krishna is talking is is a buddy buddies with this prince Arjun. Arjun. A prince, he's a prince. Wait, let me see. Let me see actually, see, Kate, whenever Katie says something in the live chat, I need to pay attention. The story of the entire, I'm like, oh God, this is why I keep saying Gita is a part of a larger story, but larger book, because that larger book is the world's most annoying tongue twister. That's why I wasn't saying, that's why I wasn't, I was just going to say, now Katie is making me say it. Okay. That's why I was trying to say part of a larger book because that larger book is this is this monstrosity here with like more vowels than any any word in the goddamn alf. Look at this. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. The story of the entire Mahabharata. Mahabharat. Maha. Okay. Piece by piece. Cut it into small pieces and then read each piece by alone okay maha bara ta mahabharata ah, i did it i think i did it okay yeah the mahabharata hey i'm doing I, I did i did the thing i'm a hindu now i'm indian okay good i didn't think i could ever say this I could, okay it's 15 times that of the bible so no one can get the uh, to so many characters in, in one video. Yes, I can. That's I, I can. Okay. So the Gita is part of this larger book, which I'm not going to read anymore. Okay. And this book, this story in this book is one of the like largest novels, drama stories in his in the history of mankind. I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It's longer than Iliad um, and you know Homer, right? I think I think that's the case. Like. It's, much, it's even bigger than that, okay? So there's that. 
in Neptune, I'm going to read chapter one and two. Like this is not, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on the story. We're going to read other parts of the Gita later. Okay. Right now, today, we're going to uh, focus on one verse from chapter one and a couple of verses from chapter two. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to have fun with Hinduism for, for years to come. So don't, uh, like yes there are other parts of the Gita that I will highlight later but today we're going to let me see which verse on chapter 1 I want to highlight J just to give you some context about what the story is and then we're going to go towards the, chapter 2 to give you the story okay so chapter 1 verse 26 is saying there, there Arjun could see stationed in both armies his fathers, grandfathers teachers uh, maternal uncles, brothers, cousins, sons, nephews, grandnephews, friends, father-in-laws, and well wishers. Okay, so Arjun is a prince about to start a war with another one group and another, against another, and these people are connected. They be family. They be family. They are. They are. They. They. They are his people. Like this is like this is a war that is about to start, and he's leading his group. Don't ask me the name of each group. There are like a lot of names here involved, okay? And he's looking at the other side and the war that is about to start. And he's like, this is, this, I wish I had the family meme ready. Wait a second. Hold on. This is what Arjun is thinking. Arjun is thinking. There we go. Got it. Okay. This is what Arjun is thinking. He's looking at the other side and he's like, why are why are we why are we doing this? This is not good. Okay. These are this is this is my family. I'm gonna be killing my family. Okay. Um Katie is saying the context is that they are on why are you doing this? Why are you giving me these names, Katie? You're gonna this is like you're why are you being so abusive? Okay, so Katie's saying the context is that they are on Kurukshetra battlefield, the war between Pandavas. Oh, pa okay, Panda uh, and Kara Karavas. Okay, which one is Arjun side? Arjun is on the Panda side or on the Kar Karavas side? No, I'm just gonna try. You're just saying you don't need to read, read the names. I'm gonna try anyways. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. Keep, 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 keep giving it to me, okay? Anyways, this is this is what this is what Arjun is thinking. Like, can we just not? Can we just not kill each other? Like, this is like we're 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 family. We're family. Okay, Kurukshetra. Kurukshetra. Okay, thank you, Susie. Thank you, Susie. Anyways. And Krishna, who was there, acting like he's not Krishna, acting like he's not like a divine entity, being best friends, buddy buddies with Arjun as like his charioteer, going into battle. He's he's looking at Arjun and he's like, "Dude, what? What? Oh, look at the battlefield! By the way, behind us, you can see like the you see the Gita is like." You can see the background, right? The background. Oh, there should be some beautiful Hindu art, by the way. I should have prepared some really, maybe for future streams. I will have art. I will have Krishna and Arjun art related stuff about the battlefield, about him being getting revelations from God and stuff like that, right? I will have to have these pictures ready. Arjun is among the Pandavas. Okay, good. This is easy because one of the, the Pandavas is easy to remember because Panda. Okay, so Arjun is on the panda side, but let's go to chapter two. I only wanted to give show you one verse from ch chapter one of the Gita because it just shows that the family ties, like his father's, like he's looking at the other side among both armies. He's looking at both the arm, both arm. Maybe I should zoom in a little bit, and he's seeing his father's, grandfather's. By the way, uh, yeah. Uncles, brothers, cousins, sons, they're like, these are my relatives. Why, what's the point of all this bloodshed? 
Like Arjun is the peaceful guy. Okay. Let me let me give you why this pick pisses me pisses me off so much. Okay. Nowhere in Christianity or Islam do you see somebody, you know, okay, so for example, in Islam, you see like go kill these people like oh like wage wars on the on the unbelievers um in the in the bible you see god telling people to go like ma- commit mass genocide and 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 the malachites and like smash their the head of the babies okay god commands in the in in the bible the to the israelites to go smash baby heads okay so both the the quran and the bible are extremely barbaric and violent okay but the Gita takes this to a whole nother level, okay? Because nowhere in the Quran or in the Bible, you have somebody raising an objection, saying, I object to this to mass slaughter with the motivation of being more peaceful, not because like he's the e- like an evil villain who's like, oh no, don't kill us, we're the evil ones, so we could backstab you, with with messages of killing people bad, murder bad, genocide bad. Okay, Ma- you know maybe not genocide because there are families and anyway. well, anyway, mass mass killing bad. Okay. Um, yeah, but when I'm saying genocide here, I'm not being very technical with my definitions here. I'm just talking about mass killing. Okay, that's why I say genocide. But yeah, don't don't get legal with me here right now. Um, and he's the character in the story that is on the wrong side. Like, imagine if you had, you know, the 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 Quran or the Bible, and God was like, "Go kill all these people." And there was a character in that story that came out and made an argument for peace and understanding and not killing and everybody getting along. And God and said, no, you are wrong. That's the story of the Gita. And we, we shall see. We shall see what Krishna all of a sudden starts being like, why, why, is, why you don't want to go to war? He's like, Arjun is like, I don't want to kill my family. And Krishna now steps in. So let's go to chapter two. Okay. Let me see what, it, what you guys are saying in the live chat. The thumbnail has. Okay. So Katie saying the thumbnail of this video has Arjun riding the chariot. Krishna is maneuvering. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I don't know who was writing the chariot. So basically, you have, what you have to imagine... Hold on, let me actually get the image so people could get some visuals in their head. Um, Krishna, Arjun. All right, let's get some visuals so people could imagine what's going on, okay? So I don't know which one... Okay, yeah, so like, look, this is Krishna. And this be Arjun, Okay. So Krishna is like riding the horses here. I think Arjun is like the one with the bow. You could tell which one is Krishna by the um, blue colors of the skin, who is which is supposed to be dark blue, because I'm assuming that's what Krishna means, right? Krishna does. Hey, correct me if I'm right. Doesn't Krishna mean dark blue? Okay, you can see colorism here. Okay, so you can see which one is the god and which one is the prince because one of them be blue. Uh, But given that Indian culture is very colorist, they decided to go with light blue instead of dark blue. Okay. This is again, this is Arjun and this is Krishna. Okay, so somebody saying Krishna means black. Krishna, my understanding is that Krishna has two meanings, either black or dark blue. Everybody's saying means black. That's I heard it has two, it could have two meanings, dark blue or black. And because Indian society be colorist, they decided to go with blue instead of black. By the way, to for people who keep criticizing us because our blasphemous art, the gods and goddesses be blue. And people are saying, why are we being colorist? 
Why are we not drawing them as black? We, because this is how in art your Hindu gods are recognized. So Indian culture is colorist and they are making it blue. So everybody recognizes these gods as blue. So if we make them black, nobody will associate them with gods and goddesses of Hinduism. So that's why we draw them as blue, as the way that people recognize them. Okay, so people are saying, no, dark black only. Okay, dark black only. But he's blue. Anyways, let me see if I can see some, which one of these arts, like, look at this. This is right before the battle. Uh, this is the entire dialogue of the Gita is is Arjun saying, like, dude, we shouldn't, we shouldn't murder. And Krishna is like, but we should. That's the entirety of the Gita. Okay, we're going to go through some of the scripture. Again, all of this is like, Oh, oh, I don't want to kill people. And Krishna is like, you should kill people. We'll, we'll, we'll see the arguments very soon. These are beautiful, by the way. These Arjun and his knees. Okay. We should make a blasphemous art related to this. We should make some... Oh, yeah. Maybe we could like... Oh, I have some ideas. I don't know if I could say it in the stream. I'll tell Susanna after the stream. Okay. Let me see. All right, so you guys get the picture. In fact, I think liberal Bengali Hindu, I think his, wow, like all this time, like a liberal Bengali Hindu who's been very active in our live chat, his or her um, profile pic is Arjun bending the knee to Krishna. You can see like, now you now everybody who didn't recognize what this art is, now you can recognize that. By the way, guys, I have to say, like, I actually really enjoy the art and the story, okay? Like, I'm not, if it, if it comes to mythology and storytelling, this is beautiful. I, I fucking love all of this, okay? So I'm not, like, if you, if you don't take any of this as a guide to life or a religion or real events... I don't have any issues with enjoying. In fact, it's one of the most beautifully illustrated uh, work of fiction and storytelling, you know, that I've ever seen. You know, it's very impressive, very detailed, very interesting dialogue. Okay, um, but if you want to take religions seriously, okay, if you want to see this as a guide to anything, then this is the Gita is by far the most brutal, violent scripture to exist. And I will make that case for you as we go on. By the way, what is, what is liberal Hindu saying? Uh, in any battlefield, Arjun would have been executed for... Uh, what? Deliriction? Dele what's, what's that word? I have to look that up. I don't know that word. Deliriction? Dereliction, the state of having been abandoned and become uh, the okay, yeah, so abandoning. Um, in any way, are you trying to make excuses for isn't isn't Arjun in charge of the battlefield? Like, isn't he in charge? I think he has some decision. I, I, I think he has some decision making. Let me see if. Okay, Queer Indian Atheist, which you, you should all go subscribe to, is saying, Hindu storytelling is quite good and poetic. We'd love to see some high-budget adaptations of them, but I do have a problem with the belief. Yes, exactly. Um, and I also have a problem with the fact that nobody will, you know, we can only wait for, people are not going to make high-budget movies until India becomes a lot richer because Indians get butt hurt if Hollywood wants to make the, turn the, any of these into movies. This is why you get to. That's just why you get to see very high budget uh, adaptations of Japanese mythology because they don't they don't have an inferiority complex, so they don't get butt hurt where other people turn their beliefs into movies. But you're not going to see any high budget um, Hollywood movies of of Hindu mythology because they get they have an inferiority complex and they're going to get butt hurt over other people like. Uh, you know, using their culture for entertainment, right? So we just for to see movies like that, we just have to wait for India to become very rich, 
um, hopefully in my lifetime, and then they will afford to make the make good movies of it themselves, like high budget movies, right? Yeah, so yeah, he is in charge. So don't tell me like, oh, if he abandons, if Arjun leaves the battlefield, like if any other in any other situation, he would have been executed. He is in charge. He could decide not to do the murdering. Like, don't give me excuses for this, okay? And also, what you so um Bengali Hindu, liberal Hindu, what you were arguing. What what you the, I don't know if you were making excuses for why this is okay or not, but the the argument that you were using was the argument that uh, Nazi soldiers were using in the Nuremberg tri Nuremberg trials, right? Nuremberg trials, like you know the famous phrase, like we were just following orders, which we now ac all accept is not a good excuse for committing war crimes. So you can't just say like, oh, I was just following orders. Like we have as as a civilized society, we have accepted, given the crimes of World War II, that following orders is never going to be accepted as an excuse for committing war crimes. The Nazi comparison is apt. Oh, okay. Thanks. Anyways, let's go through the scripture. All right. Let me see. You guys have a lot of. <laughs> yeah, true. These are that. That's also. If I, I mean, we're not being race essentialists here, but for but for people who don't know these, uh, the people in this battlefield, they they be Aryans. So, but again, not we're not we're not. That's not what we're saying. That was just. Anyways, let, let me let me move on before before we get into trouble. All right, so uh, verse uh, chapter two, verse one. Um, seeing okay, I'm not gonna read these names. Okay, you could just see it on the screen. Seeing Arjun overwhelmed with pity, his mind grief stricken, and his eyes full of tears, Sri Krishna. I'm just gonna say Krishna. Krishna spoke the following words. Let me actually have the prepared. Yeah. So basically, Arjun is like in tears. He's like, I don't want to kill anybody. <laughs> no, he's like, I, I, this is not good, man. This is not right. This is not, this is not okay. I don't want to kill anybody. This is my family. Let's not do this today. Let's not do this today. We could do better than this. Okay. So Krishna is like, God damn it. So Krishna says, let's go to verse number two. My dear Arjun, how has this delusion overcome you in this hour of pearl? Pearl. It is not befitting an honorable person. It leads not to the higher abodes, but disgrace. Verse number three. It does not befit you to yield to this unmanliness. Unmanliness. Gender stereotypes, everybody. This is like, what? And like, he's basic. Krishna is basically calling Arjuna pussy. It's like, bitch, get the hell up. Stop crying like a little pussy. What is this? Pathetic. Oh, look, he actually says this. Give up such petty weakness of heart and arise, O vanquisher of enemies. This is giving me Muhammad Hijab vibes. Like unmanless. Like, look at this. This is this is absolute pure sexism, right? This is sexism, like expecting men, like men, he's say. Guys, this is he's saying men don't cry. He's like, stop being a bitch, stop being a girl. Why are you acting like a girl? Look at you. Look at you crying like a little bitch. Look at you. This is what Krishna is saying. Somebody educate Krishna about gender stereotypes and expecting men not to cry and all that stuff. Somebody educate. Okay. 
This is the, yes, exactly. There we go. <laughs> the kid is saying toxic masculinity got the better of Krishna. <laughs> oh yeah, this is very much like Daniel Haggard. He was like, men, men don't like you're you're about to go to battle. Why are you crying? Like look at you. You're like you're supposed to, like I I'm pretty sure. Okay, I can't be I okay, I can't be 100 percent sure. Okay. But I suspect that if you were there at that battlefield, this like whoever was writing this, they would put "O oh, vanquisher of enemies" into quotation, because I think, I think Krishna was being like, was like being this was satire, like he was being ironic, like he was like, vanquisher of enemies, like like look at you, you're like you're supposed to be a vanquisher. Like I think he was like doing quotations in the air, because you're supposed like he is crying. Like it, you know, and like you're. This is unmanly. You're supp- like I don't think he was being serious when he said un- a vanquisher of enemies. He was being like, you should put this in quotation. He was joking. You're like, look at you, pathetic. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Krishna, Krishna had sixteen thousand wives. He did, but. And and the impressive thing about it is that he had he's fucked them all at the same time by making copies of himself. Am I correct about that? Krishna fucked all the sixteen had sex with all of these sixteen thousand plus wives with them at the same time. Correct? Is that correct? So he he he's famous for his three things: stealing butter. Having sex with sixteen thousand women at the same time, inviting people to mass genocide. Okay, and the fourth one, making sure the right king is in charge. Right? Yes, I'm correct. He does have sex with them at the same time. Thank you for confirming. Yes, four things: invitation to mass genocide, having sex with sixteen thousand women at the same time, stealing butter, obsessed with butter. Um, and yeah. The, the the only good thing about Krishna is that he keeps making sure um or killing demons who come at him because um when he was a child and yeah and also making sure that he uh, the right king is in power making sure things are in balance however apparently in Hinduism balance means make sure making sure that um, mass genocides go through that's what balance means well, uh, yeah, he, so people saying he also killed wildlife. To be fair, that wildlife came at him, right? Like that wildlife, are you referring to like bulls and, you know, demon-possessed bulls and stuff like that? Because that's not fair. Like they were trying to kill him. Okay, let's continue. Where were we? We were, we were talking about gender stereotypes a toxic masculinity (laughs) okay guys we shouldn't say yeah okay um by the way we use toxic masculinity as a word that i have a problem with but we're just using it here anyways today we're not going to be too picky okay so let's go to number four so arjun says here how can i how can i shoot arrows in the battle on on these men okay Like, look at them. Why should I, like, how can I shoot arrows at them? And then he continues in verse 5 saying, it would be better, look at this, guys, read this. It would be better to live in this world by begging than to enjoy life by killing these noble elders who are my teachers. Oh, Arjuna is so sweet. If we kill them, the wealth and pleasures we enjoy will be tainted with blood i have to keep reminding you guys this per the person who's saying this is on the wrong side according to hinduism like if you're reading scripture like if somebody just gave you this verse from scripture out of context if you were not reading the entire story and you would you didn't realize that the person who's saying this ends up being the wrong. You would think like out of context. Oh, look at this! This is such a beautiful scripture. Look at how peaceful it is. It's telling you that wealth coming out of killing 
is bad. Like, no, you cannot, you can never enjoy wealth and pleasures of this world if it comes through war. Like, you know, like imagine like all, all the military industrial complex and all the jobs that are, for example, are being made in the United States because of the war industry. That wealth is not good. It's tainted with blood. Look at this. Like you can just look at the scripture. Like look at this is a this is a religion that is teaching you the peaceful ways, the nice ways, the the less bloody ways, right? And then you read the whole story. Like oh no, this is this is the wrong. This is the person that was wrong. This is the person that God the God in this story was against this verse. Yeah, I think Arjun was not on the wrong side. Dude, by the end of this, he's been proven wrong by Krishna and he's go he goes stabby stabby to, to his family. I don't know what you're talking about. He he Krishna. Okay, maybe you're saying Arjun. Yeah, okay. Uh, wait, wait, yeah, you're right. Arjun was not on the wrong side, according to us. True. Like Arjun seems to be the good guy here, okay? But Krishna's job in the entire Gita is to argue against this position. Let me um, let me make this clear. Actually, let me let me tell you what this reminds me of. Okay, in Islam, we have Muhammad, okay, preaching Islam and saying like coming up and in the Me in Mecca early early time in his prophethood career, when he wasn't being very su successful with his with his new entrepreneurial uh, revelation business. Um, he was still struggling to get followers. People were not subscribing. So the Qureshi was trying to make get this annoying person to stop talking crap about their gods, right? And they came to Muhammad and they were like, came to his uncle. And they were like, get this, get this fucker to stop talking against our gods. Right? Can you stop make him stop? Like, what do we what do we gotta do? What do we gotta do to get this guy to shut up? Right. And it's amazing because the Qureshis were like supposed to be the bad guys here. And when he when Muhammad was like not very powerful, they were being nice for them. They were like, Do you want money? Do you want do you want money to shut up? Because we have money. We can just give you money. We can give you what do you want? Okay. Uh, do you want girls? Do you want boys? You want slaves? What do you want? Uh, and Muhammad was like, dude, if you give me the sun and the moon, if you put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, I'm not going to shut up. Like, there's no amount of wealth and power that you could give me in this world that's going to make, make me sh shut up, okay? So we're like, oh, that's nice. Like, when people wouldn't read that, like, at least if they ignore the rest of Islam and just look at that, they're like, oh, this is like, this is a power person that is like, believes in something that is good and the goodness of that thing is important to him to, the, to, to so that wealth and power is not going to make him stop doing what he's doing, right? I mean, usually I associate that with, some, with the good with the person that is a good part of the story, right? However, in the Gita, in the Gita, Arjun is saying that Arjun is supposed to be in, is on the wrong side. I mean, philosophically, when it comes to like no amount, he's like saying no amount of wealth is going to make me stop. You make me kill like make me want to kill these people right it, it's so amazing because in the gita arjun is the wrong guy like like how could you not read this and relate to arjun as the person who is on the right side but you keep, will keep reading and you see that krishna's argument for why arjun is wrong like anybody in the right with the right mindset, anybody that could read this without being biased could see, but like Arjun is a good guy and Krishna is the evil, psychotic, go kill people for the sake of killing guy. But we're supposed to take Krishna's side because he's God. This is like the best case of one of the most, you know, the um, one of the another exhibit of how divine command theory is not just an Abrahamic thing, right? 
I mean, technically, our, our, this is not divine command theory because Krishna makes an actual argument. Unlike, oh, actually, here's the thing. Abrahamic religion, at least when it comes to the methodology of figuring out what's good and what's bad, I think maybe the Gita is a little bit better than Abrahamic religions. I mean, not by much because the conclusion is still mass genocide. Uh, but if you look at Abrahamic religions, the argument, there's no argument needed for why Abraham is supposed to kill his son. The, the reason for why it's good is because God said so, right? So it's like absolute divine command theory of morality, which is which is the worst moral uh, standard anybody could have. Like it's the, wor it's, the bit, it's the greatest failure of any moral philosophy, the divine command theory. And th that's the whole point of uh, the Abraham Abraham story, to tell people we de God defines what's good and what's bad. You don't have to find any reason other than God said so. However, at least in the Gita, Krishna makes an argument. We'll, we'll, we'll see what the argument is. But there's an attempt at um, a utilitarian perspective of doing a cost-benefit analysis of why mass murder is okay. Okay, So it's not just, hey, Krishna said so. Krishna actually brings up reasons. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so liberal liberal Hindu is saying war would have uh, taken place even if Arjun would have abandoned the battlefield. That's what Krishna is. No, okay, so here's the thing. Krishna's, that's what Krishna's argument is going to be, part of Krishna's argument. But that's not, it's actually not. Uh, Krishna is saying like, is making a determinist argument. Uh, making uh, Krishna is going to make uh, at some point in the Gita going to say, "I've seen the battle is going to take place. You can't change anything, so go with it." And again, these are excuses for the worst crimes that you could come up with humanity, in humanity. Like like, oh, don't take a stand because you don't be against mass murder because mass murder will happen whether or not you're against it. Right? Again, getting good. This is like getting good men to not speak up. Because by convincing them that evil things will happen regardless of what, which is a very dangerous suggestion, because that will make everybody. If you if you ascribe to this kind of philosophy, then nobody would stand up to evil, and evil, we will let evil take place because with the assumption that evil will go go through regardless. So Arjun should just go kill because if he doesn't kill killing would have happened anyways i mean krishna says that i've already seen that these people that the battle has taken place so with it i mean determinism is true but you can't put that into your moral philosophy because if you do that then you will justify any form of mass murder we're getting too philosophical with this let's just go through the verses guys guys if you have any objections please don't jump ahead into arguments that krishna hasn't made yet we will have many streams about the, the Gita and other Hindu scripture, okay? By the way, if you're here, if you want to get us, if you want to see us go and analyze Hindu scripture and Hinduism as a whole, the history of it, the gods, the scripture, we're going to have a lot of streams about Hinduism for years to come. So make sure you subscribe. And also also make sure you like this video because this is, I haven't seen people do this, okay? This is, people go after Christianity uh, and Islam um, and even Judaism, we have gone after Judaism, even though not, not that many people are, you know, it's, a, it's a, like one person of the planet. What is it? Two percent. But this, this, the third largest religion in the world is Hinduism, and there's not that many people like analyzing it. And I need your help to, for us to reach more people. So please like this video. So and also I accept criticism. Like you see, I'm reading some things in the live chat. Um, so please make sure you like this video so that hopefully our channel grows a little bit so that we do more of this, okay? So please, please make sure you like, okay? All right, so if you want to... Oh, thank you. Somebody's saying thank you, Atheist Republic, for doing this stream. Uh -huh, you thank you. Thank you. So guys, if you want to criticize what I'm saying, let's criticize the part of the scripture that we are because you guys are like some of the criticism in the live chat you're taking a step back or you're taking a step forward you're talking about other the other parts of the gita like let's focus on what the part that we are at right now okay and also make sure you tag atheist republic if you want me to read something uh 
Yeah, um, yes, cast this this Gita is also a cast this. We will get to that as well. Oh, thank you, thank you. All right, so where were we at? What verse where, where, where are we at? Okay, so Arjun was saying in verse number four, like, how could I shoot at these people? Okay, and oh, this is by the way, I am a big fan of Arjun. I am a big fan of Arjun. Look, look how poetic and beautiful this is. I really relate to him, and it's not only I relate to him. I really think he's such a he was before Krishna um, brainwashed before Krishna brainwashed uh, Arjun by the end of the Gita. I would I'm a, such a fan of like look how poetic and beautiful this is. Like I'm gonna read it one more time. I know you you might not want to add, listen to this. It would be better to live in this world by begging than to enjoy life by killing these noble elders who are my teachers. If we kill them, the wealth and pleasures we enjoy will be tainted with blood. How could you not love this guy? Like, wouldn't you want more princes and kings and warlords to have this kind of attitude to life? This was the philosophy that should have been the message of Gita. The Arjuna's philosophy before he was brainwashed by Krishna should have been the teachings of the Gita. However, the teaching of the Gita is the opposite. It's Krishna changing this mindset. The entire philosophy of Gita is proving that this way of thinking is wrong. Isn't that unbelievable? Like, I'm assuming most people who don't know much about Hinduism or Gita would think that something like that, what we're reading, is the message of Gita because they think Gita, well, Gita is Hinduism, Eastern religion, Eastern religion, peaceful. This would be something that the Gita is teaching. However, the entirety of the Gita, the goal of it is to prove that why this is wrong. Exactly. Neptune is saying Krishna is a jihadist. Exa worse <laughs> like guys this is worse than jihadism in islam because jihadism in islam is like go kill if they do this go do that if they do this right or if they have this belief by the end of the gita you you come with the conclusion that if you're from the warrior caste you kill because you kill because that's what you do you don't even need a reason. You don't even need to be, you don't even need to worry about the results. You kill because it's your duty. Don't worry about people dying because their souls will never die. This is worse than Islam. This is by far worse than Islam. We'll get to that. Anyways, I got ahead of myself. I told you not to get ahead of me, but I got to get, I went ahead. Anyways, let's go to number six. Number six, we do not even know which results of this war. Okay, so this is Arjun is continuing, okay? Arjun is saying, we do not even know which results of this war is preferable for us all. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll tell you what he's saying, okay? What I think he's saying. Uh, conquering them or being conquered by them, even after killing them, we will not desire to live. How could you not think Arjun is the good guy, okay? So he's saying being responsible for killing these people is so bad that I don't even know if I prefer to win or lose. <laughs> like he's saying, I would actually prefer to lose this battle <laughs> because the, the, the misery, the hurt that is gonna, I'm going to feel from being responsible for murdering these people is going to be so high that the joys of victory will not be able to undo that. That the pain from being defeated in this war, losing this war, is less from the pain of being a killer. How could you not love this guy? Like, I, don't, I, I might actually prefer to lose this battle. That's, yeah, I said it. I said it. I'm going to battle, hoping maybe that I lose, because I don't want to kill. 
Team Arjun. I'm t- Team Arjun, everybody. I'm Team Hashtag Team Arjun. God damn it. That, that Doesn't he seem like such a nice dude? Okay, I, I was with you until you went uh, you went too far. Okay, so you think Krishna was a lunatic. It seems like it, right? I agree with you. And then he's a barbarian. Yes, I agree with you as well. He seems like he wants to just kill, get Arjun to just kill everybody. And then, and a sex addict man. Guys, come on. Come on. Don't sex shame people. This is not, this is not cool. Guys, I tell you, if I could have sex with 16,000 princesses at the same time i would i would i would i don't know what you're talking about sex addict man if i could do what krishna did i would i, I mean let's be fair to krishna all of those princesses were very willing like he wasn't pulling off a muhammad when it comes to his sexual adventures I don't think Krishna was pulling a Muhammad. He wasn't um, having sex with sex slaves or anything like that. Okay. When it comes to being a war criminal, I think Krishna outdoes Muhammad. But when his sexual adventures, I think he was like the princesses were more into Krishna than he was into them. Like they were extremely willing. Do not sex shame Krishna. That that is not fair. Uh, people are saying Team Arjun, Team Arjun. Oh, this guy is on the team. Team Dharma means that you're pro genocide, by the way. Okay, Team Dharma. Okay, so we're basically Arjun versus Dharma. Krishna is a fuck boy. Yes, and there's nothing wrong with that. We, we are against Krishna for his advocation of a mass murder, but not for getting around. That's completely cool, especially if the princesses are enjoying it, they, which they seem to have been. Oh yeah, I know. I, oh yeah, that was like not cool. He stole women's clothing when he, they were bathing. Yeah, that we will get into those in other and in other uh, streams. Anyways, let's continue. So Arjun continues um, in number seven. I am Arjun says I am confused about my duty. No, because I get I, I don't know if people know like uh, Arjun is like from the warrior cast, okay? And he's supposed to like just follow just follow the Dharma. Guys, just follow the Dharma. Just follow so again, see see when in in Hinduism, when you're supposed to just do your duty, don't question things, follow the right way, follow Dharma, okay? Um in Hinduism we say follow Dharma. In Islam, we say we call that Sirat al Mustaqim, the right path. Okay. In modern history, we call that follow following orders. Okay. All horrible ways of um, coming up with what is the right thing to do. Right. So in Hinduism, so in Hinduism, when they te- te- teach you to just follow Dharma, do your duty, follow what your caste what your duty is according to your caste. And Arjun's duty as the warrior caste is to just commit war crimes, right? That's his duty. When you hear that, just remember that is equivalent to what the soldiers were saying, the Nazi soldiers were saying in the Nuremberg trials when people, when they were being questioned for why they committed war crimes and their answer was, we were just following orders, okay? And... We, we did not accept, we as the civilized world, I mean, not me, the civilized world didn't accept that as an excuse then. So we shouldn't accept following Dharma as following your duty as an excuse for committing war, war crimes. We shouldn't accept it here as well. Right? So, yeah, so Arjun is saying, I'm confused about my duty and and I'm besieged and I'm besieged with anxiety and oh my god this is a big word faint heartedness I am your disciple oh sorry okay so by the way for people to, who don't know 
I think Arjun at, does, at this point still doesn't know that Krishna is be a god. He doesn't know that he's a, as the person, uh, you know, with a standing next to a god. I think he understands that Krishna is like his like teacher. So he's so Krishna at this point to Arjun is like a teacher to him. Correct me if I'm wrong. He's like a best buddy to him, and he's like a fellow uh, war criminal with him, right? Like a uh, battle mate, or I don't know what they're called. So these are the thing; these are the relationships that uh, Arjun and Krishna are having. Like I think later in the Gita, he was like, "Dude, you're a god, aren't you?" Like he starts suspecting that he's more than what he's what he seems to be. Wait, did somebody? Wait, why did you time out MKV music guy? Why did you time him out? Oh, okay, no, you're right. Good job. No, good job. He was spamming. He was spamming the same thing over and over again. So thank you, thank you. Uh, time good. Yeah, no spamming, no spamming, guys. If you if you have a point, even if it's against us, just post it one time. You don't have to post it a million times. Good call. Okay, so he's asking. I am. He's telling Krishna, I am your disciple, and I'm surrendered to you. Please instruct me for certain what is best for me. Arjun is like, I don't know what's right anymore. I am. He's having a crisis. Okay, he's having a panic. He's like, are we just about to go kill all these people? Like, I don't know. Am I supposed to? This they're telling me this is the right thing to do, but it doesn't seem like the right. It doesn't feel like the right thing to do. It doesn't feel like the right thing to do. This they're telling me this is right, but it just feels so wrong. I cannot even tell what is good and what is bad anymore. Just tell me, Krishna. Just and I don't think he calls him Krishna because he doesn't know it's Krishna. But whatever, he tells him like, just please, just tell me what to do, because honestly, I, I give up. I give up at this moment. I don't know what is good, you know, good and bad, right and wrong. They have lost all meaning to me. He's having a crisis. He's having a moral crisis. He can't tell like what what the, what society, what the societal expectations and the culture has told him that it's the right thing to do. His inner, his natural sense of sympathy, his inner moral compass is pointing in the exact opposite direction, and this and this contrast, this like, is making him feel a lot of anxiety he literally says that i'm feeling anxiety like he's having a panic moment like a panic attack like this cannot be the right thing this cannot be the right thing to do so he's just trying to surrender to krishna okay by the way guys arjun is saying i am going to surrender to you what does that remind you of yeah, Krishna is trying to be a therapist. Yeah, Krishna is being a therapist. He's like, Whoosh. Krishna is like, breathe, Arjun, breathe slowly. It's okay. Whoosh. It's okay. You're a warrior. You kill people. You shouldn't be. Why are you panicking over killing people? Like, what kind of a warrior are you being, Arjun? This is not good. This is not the way. This is not Dharma. <laughs> Jack is saying the way Armin is describing the situation in the Gita is giving me attack on the Titan wives from some weird reason. No, it's, oh my god, you guys are more <laughs> you guys are more <laughs> you guys are weirder than me. No, I wasn't talking about sub or dumb, but some some yes, yeah, sub some some other version of sub, not not this kinky version of sub. What does this remind you of when he's saying I'm surrendering to you? Katie is saying, so Arjun's confused state made him consider Krishna, who is aware of Dharma and the scripture, to be his guru and surrenders himself as a disciple. Yeah, so yeah, I guess Krishna also saw that this is going to happen. He knew this was going to happen. So Arjun is confused and he's just so desperate for any kind of guidance that he's just like, anybody, please just tell me what to do because I can't tell anymore, right? And Krishna is like, well, it's good that I'm here. Um, Gage in America is saying, Krishna also says there are many ways, to, uh, okay, to be enlightened, but surrendering to him is the sh is a shortcut. Yes, yes, yes. But what up, guys, pay attention. What does this, what does this surrendering remind you of? 
Yes, they are advised to surrender. Just sur like when you just surrender to the way, just surrender to the gods. Sub is better, sub and dumb. You guys really think like, okay, guys, I appreciate that you guys think kinky stuff is the only thing on my mind <laughs> all the time, but this this is not the case here. <laughs> what you go? Oh, Gaijin American is getting close. Surrender to yeah. Okay, yes, yeah, submission to God. What is what is the religion that is literally named after submission to God? What is the religion that the meaning of the religion? is submitting to God. There we go. Islam. <laughs> okay. There we go. This reminds me of Islam, which literally means surrendering to Allah. Muslim literally means the, the, somebody who has fully submitted to Allah. Yes, exactly. Islam means submission. You guys got it. So this is this this part of the verse reminds me of Islam exactly. You guys get it. Got it. Finally, I had to I had to hold your hand and walk walk you there, but you finally got there. So he goes in verse number seven. Oh, well, let me unhighlight. Oh, I did unhighlight it already. Please instruct me for certain what what is best for me so he's the the amount of uncertainty is like he's he's begging for somebody to make this clear for him right so we go to number eight so number eight he's saying arjun is it's still arjun speaking arjun is saying i can find no means of driving away this anguish that is drying me up what Drying, drying up my sense, my senses. Wow, this is so poetic. Drying up my senses. This is very beautifully. The I don't know, like this, the sim, the symbolism. It's beautiful. I love it. Okay, I wish I was better at, you know, literature and poetic stuff to enjoy this. But even somebody like me can enjoy this. So how, imagine how beautiful it is if you could read it in the original language. I'm assuming this is even you know, 10 times more beautiful if you read it in the original language, right? Even, well, maybe maybe even more. Even, so Arjun continues, even if I win a prosperous and, and unrivaled kingdom on the earth or gain sovereignty like the celestial gods, I will be unable to dispel this grief. Oh, my God. My heart aches for Arjun. Look at this. He's like, even if you make me like as powerful as the celestial gods, you could make me as like you could put me in the positions of gods. But this guilt, this anguish, this grief of being of killing and murdering others, you would not be able to get rid of it. You know, guys, like. This man is such a sweetheart, but he's told that he's been born in the warrior caste. So his, his, his sweet, kind nature is in conflict with the caste that he's been born into. By the way, doesn't this prove to you that caste is bullshit? Like, wouldn't you think, like, if, you, if caste is supposed to be the natural order of things, it's supposed to be woven into the fabric of the universe the dharma is the way according to every single not just to, according to scripture but every single particle in the goddamn universe is testifying to the reality that is the is dharma is the way wouldn't you think that being off the warrior ca caste would naturally make you like, ooh, booga booga, I am warrior cast, I go kill, that's what I do. Me stab stab, right? Like, wouldn't you think like naturally that's what you would be feeling like? But like, but look at this, this guy is a warrior cast and this is how he feels. And Krishna like, dude, what's your, what's wrong with you? This is not natural. This is your, your warrior cast. You're in conflict with your your with your nature. Why are you being so peaceful?
Okay, so liberal Hindu is saying in ancient times, people from all castes used to take part in war, not exclusively uh, the warrior caste. Yes, I know liberal Hindu, but if you're a warrior caste, that's more that's more in line with your nature and your duty. And this is what Krishna keeps referring to as well. Like, and this is what Arjun is referring to as well when he keeps talking about his duty. Okay, the Dharma, the way, his nature. Okay, obviously. There are certain things that you have to do. Like this is kind of like saying, like the it's not just the priestly caste. Oh, I have somebody at the door. It's not just a priestly caste that does that reads uh, scripture. There are other people that do it as well. Okay, so well, I mean, I mean, technically they're not supposed to. Okay, never mind. But I'm just saying, like other people other than the priestly priestly caste are also aware of. You know, sacred stuff. That doesn't mean that only the priestly caste does that, but it is uniquely within the nature of the priestly caste to be involved with spiritual crap. Okay. So yes, I know. Like sometimes other people pick up a goddamn sword. Like it's not like I'm a farmer. Somebody's like attacking my farm. Oh, I shouldn't pick up a sword because I'm not a warrior caste. Nobody, nobody is pretending that that's what we're saying here. Okay, gauge in American, I know that's the case, but that's something we're going to discuss later, okay? Like, that's not relevant to what we're saying here today, okay? Let's focus on the scripture. We're reading scripture. All right, let's continue. I'm confused about my duty. Oh, another thing, this verse, this number eight. Number eight, we are at number eight, right? Another thing that's very is very interesting to me is that when you read like different religious scripture, you're told like what is the good way and what's the bad way, and the bad way are is often tempted to you, right? Like I don't know, sexual stuff or stealing or killing or lying. You have this temptation to do not the right thing, and then you realize that no, that's not good. Even though I am so tempted to do the wrong thing, I should do the good thing. So the wrong path is introduced to you through temptations, right? And then when you read the Gita, you get the temptation seems to be the temptation that is like you're almost giving into, but you shouldn't, you should resist it, is the temptation is the temptation to not kill people. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like he's saying, like he's being he he's he's trying to not give in to the urge to not kill people, and that urge is what he's supposed to fight. Like think about think about that. We don't get that from Islam or Christianity, telling you like you might you might be urged you might be you might be tempted to be peaceful, but don't give in to that. Like no other scripture so explicitly warns you against peaceful ways. Like again, the Quran and the Bible tell you to go commit war crimes. They do, but they not they don't go as far as like, hey, you might get tempted to be sympathetic. They don't go that far and be like, shut that voice up. They don't go that far. Okay, number nine. Wait, where are we? Did we finish number eight? Yes, we did. Number nine is saying... Wait, actually number nine and ten and um, are just names. So let's go to number 11. They're number 11. Okay, you're not going to miss... Here, you can pause and read number nine, uh, ten, number nine and ten. But for the purpose of the story, number 11 is more important. So the Supreme Lord said, by the way, for people who keep saying, somebody in the live chat was trying to say like, oh yeah, Krishna is just a philosopher here. Why are you making him act like a god? Dude, go read the rest of the Gita. What are you talking about? He literally says, I'm fucking everything in the in the rest of the Gita. He's like, somebody was like, people trying to whitewash this are like, dude, this is just a story about two buddies talking 
uh, Krishna is just like a wise person here. He's not like God. Don't make it act like this is the word of God telling people to go stabby stabby. Like, don't fucking bullshit me. I've like looked into the rest. We will get to the rest at some point as well. Okay. He he comes out and like, at some point Arjun is like, dude, who are you? And he literally like reveals himself to Arjun, and Arjun is like, holy fucking shit, what the fuck am I looking at? Go back to being human because I cannot take like I am going to fucking explode if I keep looking at like Krishna literally has to give him divine eyes to be able to, to for Arjun to look at him because he, he, he within his mu human mindset. Krishna, Arjun cannot even comprehend what Krishna is. So Krishna literally has to give him hu divine eyes so that he could reveal himself to Arjun. And even with those divine eyes, Arjun is like, holy shit, I cannot take this. Go back to being a human. This is like, this is going to destroy me just looking at you. Like, he, Krishna, Krishna literally tells Arjun, like, I am, I am destruction itself. I am the Lord of, like, I am everything that has been and will be and is. I am it. You're looking at it right now. Okay. And like, I am, I am, you know, so I don't, don't come at me and say like, oh, dude, he was just, he was nobody. Okay. He was just a philosopher. He was just advisor to like, don't make this bigger than it is. Read the rest of the Gita. Don't bullshit me. Okay. I know. Okay. <laughs> You guys, I think Hindus have not. Here's the interesting thing. I think Hindus, a lot of Hindus are not used to people coming out and dissecting their scripture like this. So that's why they're so far behind uh, Christians and Muslims when it comes to defending <laughs> their scripture. So they're just like, why are people like criticizing our scripture? We're we're not used to this. What? We're just used to non-Hindus just thinking like, oh, Hinduism, a way of life, a, a peaceful philosophy that is just, um, that's it. That, yeah, oh my God, that's it, right? But if you're like, oh my God, they're actually reading it and the people are actually criticizing your scripture. Oh my God, what do we do now? Okay, so they're not, they don't have as much experience as coming up with bullshit excuses to to come up with for why this uh, the scripture is not what actually, what we're actually reading. So that's why, uh, the excuses that they come up with is very pathetically weak. Okay, so they have like a couple of decades to pick up on. The, right now, the only thing they have. So, like, if you look at Christians, the 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 gymnastic arguments that the, the Christians have for why what we're actually reading in the Bible is not what we think it is, is they're a lot more advanced with their bullshit. Okay, and Muslims have picked up. They have like the Christians have like a couple of hundred years experience. Uh, Muslims have a few decades experience. Hindus are just getting started, right? So they go to the the only thing they have right now is like, you just don't understand it. Are you a scholar? If you're not a scholar, therefore what you're reading with your own eyes is actually not what you think it is. So everything you're reading, even though it's literally telling you that Krishna is telling Arjun to go stab people because it doesn't matter who dies because people actually don't die. Even though it's clearly saying that a god is telling you a, a prince that, which we will get to, right? I think we will get to that today. Um, don't believe what you're reading because you have to be a scholar. Because you, you, this is this the the, the scripture is so beyond human understanding. You have to have your mind has to be in tune with the frequency of the universe and the meaning of dharma and everything. And if you get, unless you meditate for a thousand years and you get exactly the right frequency of the dharma in tune with your mind, then you cannot even begin to look at the scripture and to be able to comprehend the divine knowledge that is being taught to you here. So before you get there, don't even pretend like you could understand anything that you're reading, okay? So right now, because it, this is the only, the, the main go-to for why what we're reading is not what, we, what we're actually reading, okay? But maybe in the next couple of decades, they're going to come up with better gymnastic arguments than that. But for now, this is what they have. Hmm. <laughs> yes. All right. We we were at number eleven. Oh yeah. Okay. So number eleven. The supreme the supreme Lord said, which means Krishna, 
This is basically saying like Sallallahu Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam blah 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 blah. This is what they're that's how they're saying with Krishna. The Supreme Lord said, Yeah, he's just a philosopher, bro. He's just a he's just a philosopher, bro. But we call him the Supreme Lord in the scripture. Okay, sure. Um, the Supreme Lord said, While you speak words of wisdom, you are mourning for that which is not worthy of grief. The wise lament neither for the living nor for the dead. Wow. Guys, 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 guys. I want you to try something. Next time somebody is crying for their mother dying, for their child dying, for their husband, wife, their significant other, anybody, the mother, their sister, their brother dying, go read them the Gita and tell me if the, if you get a punch in the face or not, okay? Just go to a mother who has just lost her child to cancer, okay? And just go read her the scripture. Say, the wise lament neither for the living nor for the dead. Dude, Krishna is telling you that you shouldn't be sad when people die. If you're a wise person, <laughs> okay? So, guys, every single one of you that has ever experienced any level of sadness for seeing people dying, like you hear people dying from starvation or people like getting killed, I don't know, in Afghanistan or in Yemen or somebody being, you know, executed in prison for, for, mm, for blasphemy, okay? You shouldn't, you shouldn't, I mean, you know, you shouldn't be upset. Are, are, are you not wise, bro? Are you not wise? Get, get to my level. Get to Krishna's level. Like, what the hell's wrong with you? People dying is not, is not a thing to be upset about. Look at it. You are mourning for that which is not worthy of grief. Again, I can't, I couldn't believe it. Like, when I was reading this, it's like, what is, what are you telling me that is not worthy of grief? People dying is not worthy of grief. Like you can't be saying that. You cannot be saying that. But no, like let me actually make it clear. I'm talking about people dying. Like the Gita, the most famous book of the religion that is supposed to be the most peaceful religion in the world, is telling you that no amount of people dying is something that you should be up at all upset about. If you're wise, that is. Like, holy fucking shit. What are you telling me? Guys, find me in the Quran or in the Bible any verse that tells you that people dying should not concern you at all. Anyone dying should not concern you at all. That is the wise way. This one verse by itself makes Hindu scripture the most horrible of all scriptures. Katie is saying, read random Gita verses to strangers and ask them what they think about those and eventually reveal these are Gita verses to see their reactions. Oh yeah, don't try this in India. Good, good disclaimer. So it continues in number 12. He's saying, never was there a time when I did... Oh, guys, look at this. Wait. Oh, no, no. I, I said this was specifically for Krishna. Okay? But look, listen to this. Never was there a time where I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. Guys, this is the most destructive, dangerous conclusion that you could get from the concept of reincarnation. I thought the concept of re reincarnation is as harmful as every other um, belief in afterlife. 
mostly because of the ethical conclusions that you would get out of having to calculate what's good and wrong with the with the idea of the an afterlife being existing right so if you're doing a utilitarian calculation for what's good what's bad your calculations of everything will be completely out of whack if you don't understand that this is the only, the only life you get so any religion that has a afterlife in it is extremely dangerous because it completely destroys the current the correct conclusions that you could get when it comes to doing an analysis of right and wrong because now you have to take account an afterlife into your calculations of utilitarian especially if the afterlife is forever and this life is temporary it will completely ruin everything when it comes to figuring out what's right and wrong however i never took this into account that with it that th this is actually it makes it even worse okay this is even worse like this is from the concept of reincarnation from the concept of your soul not being able to die and if you die the only thing that is happening is your soul is jumping from one body to another you don't even have to come up you don't even have to come up with an uh, argument for why maybe therefore killing people it's okay because the gita does that for you like it just spells it out I, I I don't know how to like highlight how big of a deal this is. Within Christianity and Islam, there are some morally justified war crimes, like according to Islam or Christianity justified. And there are some killings that are wrong. They're haram. You shouldn't kill. I don't know. Like there are some limitations. I mean, the Bible says thou shalt not kill. The Quran says maybe don't kill Ahlul Kitab or Muslims, right? Maybe. Um, you know, just don't kill. Like, killing is a harm. Sometimes maybe, maybe you should cause harm to some people and sometimes it shouldn't. But it is considered a harm in Christianity and Islam. They consider it a harm that, and therefore there are some limitations on who you get to kill, right? In the Gita, it doesn't even consider it a harm. Like what, dude? What, what, dude? What are you making a big deal? It's just killing, bro. It's just, it's just killing. It's like it's just killing the body. It's not killing the soul. Like it's completely dismissing it as a way to harm somebody. This is astronomically more dangerous than the Quran and the Bible. It's not even considering it a thing that you should be worried about. Look at read this again. It said, "Never was there, never was there a time where I existed or you existed, and we will never stop to exist. We will all just continue to exist. Don't worry, like, dude. It's it's just like, why do you think we're not actually killing anybody? Let's continue. Number thirteen. It says." Just as the embodied soul continuously passes from childhood to youth to old age, uh, similarly, at the, at the time of death, the soul passes into another body. The wise are not deluded by this. And then continues. Oh, son of... Okay, I'm not going to read the name of these people. Let me actually see. Let me go to number uh, 15, because number 14 has too many names and shit. Oh, Arjun, noblest among men, that person who is not affected by happiness and distress. Pfft. He Like, he's just, he's teasing him. He's teasing him. He's just crying. He's having an anxiety. He's having a panic attack. And he's like, hey, dude, who's not affected by happiness and distress. So, like, he's on his knees begging for some clarity. He, because he doesn't want to kill his own family. And he's like, hey, Arjun, who is not affected by distress? Sure. <laughs> and remain steady in both. Oh, no, wait. No, no, wait. I read that wrong. He wasn't referring to Arjun. He's like, you should be like this. You're not like this. Okay, he was. he's not teasing him. He's like, you, you're failing because this is how a person is supposed to be. Okay, so let me read this again. It's like, there's a comma there. I have to take that comma into account. Oh, Arjun, noblest among men, comma, okay. 
the, the person who is not affected by happiness and distress and remains steady in both becomes el eligible for liberation. All right, this is moksha. Liberation, is this like moksha or nirvana in Buddhism? Moksha is, li so liberation, Katie, correct me if I'm wrong. Liberation is referring to moksha in Hinduism, right? Is that what it's called, moksha? Basically coming out of the cycle of birth and rebirth, like just like graduating out of it, the, right? Somebody confirm in the live chat, anybody that I'm, right? This is what in Hinduism is called, okay, I'm going to check it out myself because nobody's confirming. Moksha. Yes, I'm right. Ooh, the art, the art around moksha is also kind of pretty. Yes, Armin, you're right. Thank you. Finally, somebody confirmed. It is, oh, yeah, Katie is saying. There's a delay. That's why I didn't get it right away. Katie is saying, it is moksha. You are liberated from the cycle of reincarnation. Perfect. This In, in Hinduism, this is referred to as moksha. In Buddhism, this is referred to as nirvana. Not the band. I mean, yeah, technically. Okay, cool. So it's like you, for you to get the liberation, for you to be able to f eventually like graduate out of this cycle, you have to be stopping affected. Like this is also in Buddhism, kind of like you have to be like pleasure and pain. You completely got untouched by it. This is basically the same in Hinduism. This is how you get liberation. Okay. So you see people dying. You see mass genocide. You see people's head. You see rivers of blood. You see your own family dying in front of you. Okay. That you don't let that distress you. You like. You, you see your own brother, you hold him, and you're white, fighting in a war, and you take the sword, and you're grabbing his head, and you just slowly move the sword. Now, guys, this is scripture. YouTube, this is like I'm referring to scripture. God damn it, I have to be more careful. But you don't get upset. You look into the eyes of your own brother, and he's big. You're like, brother, why? Why are you doing this to me? But you do not get distressed because this is not the way of liberation. This is just a person changing their clothes. They're just changing their clothes from one body to another, okay? This is what YouTube, this is what Hinduism is teaching. I've obviously this is wrong. This is against, this is, this is teaching of violence. Please do not strike me. I'm just analyzing what scripture is telling you, okay? We here are against this teaching. YouTube, YouTube's algorithm, Lord, Lord YouTube, Supreme Lord YouTube, please understand that we're explaining what the te these teachings are we do not endorse violence we're anti-violence extremely anti-violence okay god damn it we're gonna get we're gonna get stricken but anyways you look into their eyes and you're like i'm not affected by this i am just doing my duty as the nazis say i was just following orders right this is your duty for liberation okay for moksha this is how you this is how you accomplish moksha, by not getting affected, not feeling any distress from killing your own family. That is the way. That is dharma. Lord YouTube is, yeah, they're more powerful than Krishna. Wait, are, are there some, are the people in the live chat that are attacking Islam? Are they thinking like that I am, that they're attacking me by like, I keep seeing this people in live chat saying, shit Allah, shit Muhammad. Is this an example? What? What is this guy? This guy is insane. Is this an example of, is this one? I'm not sure if this is, is this one of those examples of, Hindus assuming that everybody who's uh, talking crap about the religion must be some Muslim. Is this one of those? Am I are we experiencing that meme here? And Islam means fuck Allah. Like, dude, like, are you one of those like funny guys who thinks that everybody who's anti Hinduism must be a Muslim? Yes. Oh my God, this is beautiful. If that's the case, that's so, that's so, I'm so glad that we got one of those here. Yeah, you are a secret Muslim. <laughs> I can't, you're a secret Muslim, I counted them. 
Oh my God, thank you for being here because sometimes I forget that you exist and you bring me so much joy. All right, number 16. Yes, I'm saying randomly. I'm saying, well, not all Hindus. Um, Hindus genuinely believe, well, some Hindus, you be careful with that. Some Hindus genuinely believe that you are a secret Muslim and are pretending to be an atheist for like a decade only for this moment. Yeah, exactly. But not all, guys, we have really some really decent, like, make sure like the language that you use doesn't generalize hen all Hindus. Um, oh, okay, this guy is actually just shitting at everything. So maybe he's not one of those guys. No, I don't want to block him. It's kind of entertaining. Yeah, like liberal Hindu here. We like him. And there was the historian Hindu guy. We like him as well. Like there are many Hindus that supported us when we were going through the attacks by Hindutva. So we even have some Hindutva that, that are supporting us. So guys, like just make sure that when we're talking about Hinduism, uh, we can criticize Hinduism. Like, But here we do not generalize all Hindus. Most Hindus are decent people. Um, most Even even Hindutva, even some Hindutva are very good people. That, that even you know yeah so so yeah so we're not talking about all hindus okay we everything we we are criticizing hindu as a hindu scripture but not hindu people okay okay let's continue number 17 that which pervades okay but did we really think scene this has been observed okay no did we didn't read Oh, yeah, number 16. Of the transient, there is no endurance, and of the eternal, there is no cessation. Did I read that? This has verily been observed by the seers of the truth after studying the nature of both. So basically, it's continuing that don't worry about this body and this life. Um, it's just this is all just passing by. You should ca care about eternal things like the soul. Number 17 says, that which pervades the entire body, know it to be indestructible. No one can cause the destructions of the imperishable soul. It's like when you go and kill your own family, don't worry about it because their souls are imperishable. Oh, my God. Guys, this is like telling, telling people to just don't worry about killing because their souls will live on. Number 18, say, 18 says, only the material body... Guys, this is a God speaking. This is Krishna speaking. This is the one of the most popular gods in Hinduism. In the most popular Hindu scripture, which is the Gita, is saying that killing people is, no, is, nothing, is nothing you should be worried about because the soul never dies. It's saying only the material body is perishable, the embodied soul within... It, within is indestructible, immeasurable, and eternal. Therefore, fight or descendant of, I don't know who, Baharat. Like, oh, you see, just go fight. Go fight because he's not saying, guys, please, can, please understand the argument is being made here. He's not saying go kill these people because they're baddies. They're bad people. Okay? That's what Islam and Christianity say. they like, these people be bad. You're on the good side. They're on the bad side. Do go do some war, war crimes. You're on the right side, okay? Which is evil by itself, because especially like the Bible says, go kill the children as well. Uh, and the and the Quran tells you that the bad side is anybody who doesn't believe in the Quran, and go also tells you to go take sex slaves off of the woman. So the Bible and the Quran are evil, but. Their argument for why you should go stabby stabby is because they are in the wrong and you are in the right. But the argument that Gita makes for why you should go stabby stabby on people is not even that you're on the right side. It doesn't matter who's the right side. You are your duty is to kill. I don't know if you're gonna get to it here, but it, it makes the it gets to a point where it says, like, you don't have to care about the, care about the results. You don't have to worry about the argument, the results. You just follow your duty. You can, you should kill you kill whether they're on the right or wrong because killing is not a harm. 
because the soul will live on. You don't even have to make an argument for you being on the right side. They might be on the right side. Nobody's on the right side. This battle just has to go on. Krishna makes the point that the battle has to go on because I have seen it that it goes on. This is a part of the Dharma. You don't, you as a mere mortal, do not bother yourself with what the gods have destined things to be, what Dharma has destined things to be. That's not your role. This battle has to take place because we have deemed it. So we have we have the, the way of life, the, the nature of the universe has decided that this battle has to take place. The right side, the wrong side, it doesn't matter. It has to go through. And you have to do your role. You have to be the place. You have to take your place in, in the natural order of things. Your position is to be the guy that leads your army into this battle. Just take your take your spot it, where Dharma has decided for you. Just to keep things in balance. This is like a Thanos kind of argument. Like Dharma has decided that this is what you're supposed to be done. And the universe will be out of balance if you don't play your role. So just take your position in the right place based on what nature has deemed so. Right? This is the most dangerous, destructive, psychotic, violent, pro mass massacre in human teaching in the history of religion. Like, there's nothing that comes close to this. The only thing that saves this. From being not, you know, well, actually, important. Not the only, the most important thing that saves this for for Hinduism not to be the most violent religion is the fact that Hindus don't take their scriptures as seriously as other as as Muslims do. Do you know what I mean? That's what makes Hindus okay. So that's what makes Hindus less impacted by Hinduism than Muslims are impacted by Quran. By Islam, okay? So the reason why we might see Islam having a more destructive influence on people's behavior is because the relationship between Islam and Muslims is a little bit more than Hindu scriptures and Hindus, right? But again, we're not here to judge Hindus. We're here to judge Hindu scripture. So thankfully... Hindus are not going around and be like, oh, the Gita said I should go stabby stabby, so I'm going to go stabby stabby. So th that's not happening, okay? But if we're just only examining the scripture itself, not the effect on people, just the scripture itself, it doesn't get worse than the Gita. Okay, number 19. I want to get to the part. I don't know if I'm going to get to the part where it says that. Um, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it, none of this matters. And uh, let me see where, where how far we can get. We, we will have more streams. We're going to continue with the Gita and then other scripture as well. Neither of them is, uh, is in knowledge. The one who thinks the soul can slay and the one who thinks the soul can be slain. For truly the soul neither kills nor can it be killed, right? So the soul cannot be killed. The, the soul cannot be uh, killed or be killed. So there's no, the, so basically when it comes to bodies, human bodies that we're wearing on our souls, those might die. But what's important, Krishna is saying, is the soul. And the souls cannot be killed and they cannot kill. So technically you're not actually killing people when you go through their heart with their sword. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh my god. This is the oh my god. Like, don't worry about killing people because their soul is going to remain intact. That's what it, this scripture is telling you. How could this not be the most violent scripture you've ever read? Show me anything like this anywhere else. 
Number 20 says, the soul is neither born nor does it ever die, nor having once existed, does it ever cease to be. The soul is without birth, eternal, immortal, and ageless. It is not destroyed when the body is destroyed. God damn. How can one how can one who knows the soul to be imperishable, eternal, unborn, and Im immutable to kill uh, anyone cause anyone to kill? So it's just basically keep repeating the same idea. As a person should oh wow, look at this. This is this is guys. Let me tell you something. This num this verse, if you just read this verse out of context to people, people are like, oh my God, so wise. <gasps> the Gita is like wisdom from the ancients. So beautiful. Like just, just imagine like, I don't know, like some Westerner holding their latte and just reading like in a, a quote from the Gita's without reading the entire context, okay? And what do they read, okay? They read, as a person sheds uh, worn out garments, and wears new ones, like they're changing their clothes. Likewise, at the time of death, the soul casts off its worn out body and enters a new one. And you're like, so wise. Look at me being so poetic and so in touch with, you know, exotic cultures from other worlds, looking deep into the wiseness of the people of different races and me being so cultural. This is so beautiful, right? It's literally telling you that it's okay to kill people because dying is like changing clothes. But if you just read that by its own, it just, just looks so beautiful, right? It's just like, oh my God, so hard. So I'm so cultural. Look at me. Look at me reading this Gita, okay? But it's literally like, it's literally telling you that if you kill somebody, you just help them change their clothes, you know? You know how your grandpa is like so old and you need to help him change his pants, okay? And you need to like change his diaper and like change his like shirt and stuff. Okay, it's basically when you when you when you kill somebody, that's basically what you're doing. You're just helping them change their old clothes to some new clothes. That's literally the, it's saying it's literally the same thing. Okay, but if you don't read that in context, you don't know that this is an argument that somebody is making for why somebody should go kill their family. It just looks like beautiful on its own. Yeah, Katie is putting it in context. Uh, Katie is saying, kill away for your body is just another outfit <laughs> in the wardrobe of your soul. Wow, Katie, you're a poet yourself. That's a, yeah, a Krishna. <laughs> Krishna that's what, wow, well, Katie, I've never seen somebody um, summarize this in a, in a more poetic way. It was this, did you summarize it this way? Is this your doing? Because it's very well written. Kill away for your body is just another outfit in the wardrobe of your soul. That's that's the in guys, that's the entirety of the Gita. That's the summary of Gita in one sentence. Katie saying, Yeah, I came up with it. Guys, this should be this should be celebrated. I've never seen anybody summarize the entire Gita more perfectly in a, in a more poetic way. It's even is as poetic as the Gita itself. Very well done, Katie. That's very well written. I'm, I'm actually very impressed. Katie saying it's worse actually because people don't go destroying other people's wardrobes. <laughs> True. True. Okay, it's like he himself said it was poetic a few minutes ago. It is poetic. It is poetic in the way that um, if you don't if you don't see it as wisdom, I agree that it's is is poetic. It's beautiful. But the difference is that I don't read like I could see that like Game of Thrones is beautiful. Okay, uh, but I don't you know. I don't see like, oh, Cersei is a role model, so I should just follow what she says. Like, I don't feel like the I don't follow the religions that are in Game of Thrones as a guide to life. I just enjoy it as fiction. Yes, this is fiction. It's beautiful. It's beautiful and poetic as fiction, but as a guide to life, as any as a source of wisdom. Well, the the example I was giving as somebody that is looking at this and be like, oh, so wise. Like they think like 
they think that the Gita can be used as a source of wisdom, okay? Because it's just like the ancients were, it's a, it's an appeal to tradition fallacy, right? You think like people, traditional people were wise and they had like good teachings and no, they, it doesn't, there's no good teachings here, okay? If you want to enjoy this as poetry, as a beautiful uh, work of fiction, that's fantastic. Do that, okay? But other people think that the Gita could be used as a source of wisdom just because it's ancient, just because it's old, just because it's from another culture that maybe me, like I haven't been exposed to before, but now I'm being cultural because I'm like now being exposed to other people's worldview and you think you're becoming wiser for it. No, just use it as entertainment, okay? Or if you want to become wiser with it, Look at study it from a secular perspective as becoming knowledgeable for about history and the way people come up with their myths and why they come up with different myths and the process at which people um, create their gods and why do they uh, why do different people from different in different places have certain myths and others don't that will make you wiser but as soon as you look at scripture itself as a teaching as a source of morality or as a, as a source of wisdom because of its teaching, not because of... So here's the thing. Scripture can be a source of wisdom if you study how it came to be. But Scripture is absolutely not a source of wisdom if you try to take seriously its teaching as a guide for your own life. Just to make it very clear. I hope it's... A, I hope it's uh, I made myself clear about where where do I say where do I see the value of scripture both from entertainment purposes and wisdom purposes I hope you see where do I see uh, the, where do I see the value coming from um like the Quran the Quran could be entertaining because I mean, there's stories there right um you know, there's a lot of puzzles there that you have to solve for why this, you know, is is very interesting to see where this phrase, verse, where, what's the history of this verse? Where did it come from? What were the different interpretations? These are fascinating to learn. It's entertaining to learn. It's also a source of wisdom. Why did the, why did the Arabs at this time in history and at this place had these stories in this scripture and not the other ones? You will learn a lot about history, about humanity, about culture, about the evolution of ideas that you know you could use the quran as a source of wisdom in that perspective but if you read the verses and you think this is from god so it must be a source of wisdom or this is ancient the word of the you know word of the ancients must have wisdom in it and i could use the teachings of the quran itself as a way to guide my moral um compass then you have gone into a very dangerous territory Armin, please read. Hey, if you want to just read the Gita without my commentary, just go read the goddamn Gita. You are here for my commentary, not just reading the Gita. We This is a multi-decade mission that we are here on, okay? Okay, let's continue. But yes, I will read the rest of the Gita. Number 23. Weapons cannot shed the soul, nor... He's just repeating as a Krishna, we get it. Killing people, you can't kill people, okay? The soul will live on. How many times are you going to say that? You, you want me to move on. Tell Krishna to move on. He says, weapons cannot shed the soul, nor can fire burn it. Water cannot wet it, nor can the wind dry it. Yes, yes, we get it. The soul is immaterial. And then he continues. The soul. See, he keeps repeating the soul himself in different ways. I'm sure this would be a lot more enjoyable if you were reading it in the original language because this is very poetic. So anyways, let's continue. The soul is unbreakable and incombustible. It can neither be dampened nor dried. You just, didn't you just say that? It is everlasting in all places, uh, unalterable, immutable, and primor primordial. Okay. Okay, yes, we get it. Are you going to say the same thing again on number 25? Probably. The soul, the soul is spoken of as invisible, inconceivable, and unchangeable. Knowing this, you should not grieve for the body. God damn it. Like, he just wants to make sure, makes it very, very clear that killing is okay. Like, in case you didn't get it the first hundred times he said it, he's just going to repeat it so that you're like, yeah, killing is fine. 26 is saying, 
If, however, you think that the self is subject to constant birth and death, O mighty armed Arjun, even then you should not grieve like this. Wow, 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 wow. He's saying that even if you think that death and birth is possible, you should you should still not grieve like this. Why? Let me see why. Death is certain for one who has been born, and rebirth is inevitable for one who has died. Therefore, you should not l- lament over the inevitable. It's like if you even care about well, okay. So let's say you're not up to my level. You're not up to my level who understand that killing the body it's not a big deal because soul would live on. Even if you do actually care about this, like moral death and birth thingy that you guys you humans seem to care about so much you shouldn't really ups- be upset because we will die anyways we're gonna die anyways whether in the battlefield or later on on old age is that's my interpretation right my interpretation is like even if from your human perspective you shouldn't worry about it because whether you kill somebody in the battlefield or later it's just it's a different time. God, imagine the implications of this teaching. Unbelievable. Katie saying it's just it just keeps making itself worse. Doesn't even leave out many blank spaces for further apologists. <laughs> Clarifies all the shit in the chat. Yeah, you know the interesting thing with the Quran. Or sometimes it's like, guys, if you believe this, do you understand the implications? Like people are like, no, those are not the implications. But we, we read the Quran, like, no, that is the implication. If you actually believe what the Quran or the Bible teaching you, then the conclusion is that this would be okay. And that that's why the Quran and the Bible is dangerous, right? But like, and the most like many Muslim apologists would be like, no, 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 no. That's not that's the wrong interpretation. Okay. But the Gita is like, I'm gonna make it a hundred times clear for you that th- that is the correct implication. Like it makes the apologist argument very difficult. And like if I say like like I could say, guys, if you believe in reincarnation and you think this dying doesn't matter uh, because the soul will live on, wouldn't the conclusion be that we could just kill anybody and it doesn't matter? And somebody could be like, no, that would be the wrong conclusion, Armin. What are you saying? But the Gita is like, no, that is the right. That is the correct conclusion. Let me make that clear. Like it just it gives you the implications, so you don't even have to worry about it, and then it repeats itself a hundred times. And then twenty number twenty-eight. By the way, I, I can bet you there's gonna be Hindus telling me that I just don't understand what I'm reading. There's so many Hindus that are like, Armin, you're not looking at this with your third eye, and that's why you don't understand this, okay? You're in your third eye. You have to meditate for a, for a billion years before you could uh, look at all of this with your third Even though Krishna specifically is telling you that killing people is okay because their soul will live on, like he cannot make it any more clear there will be Hindus, there will be Hindus in the live chat and in the comment section telling you that what's obviously clear in this in the scripture, you are completely misunderstanding it because your third eye hasn't been opened yet. Oh yeah, exactly. So then I say, don't many say that you can't understand it and that is that is its strength. Yeah, they brag about not being able to understand it. It's just so complicated and that's a good thing it's incomprehensible it's like so beyond human understanding and they brag they think that's a good thing they think that's that's something that you can brag about (laughs) they even brag about the fact that the hindu scripture is more confusing than the abrahamic religion they're like the quran and the bible the fact that you even understand what they're saying shows how low level you are Shows how human level you are. Like you just uh, you read the Quran and you actually understand what it's saying. Ah, ha! Pathetic, weak, basic. When you read our scripture, you have no fucking clue what you're reading <laughs> because we're just so advanced. <laughs> oh my god. 
Ige. All created beings are, what is this word? Una, unmanifest before birth. What's unmanifest? What is this word? Oh, unmanifest is, is Brahman. The absolute, the pure, formless ground of being, form, which creation. Oh, okay, so it's Brahman. It's basically the essence, the essence of the universe. Unmanifest. Okay, so things that haven't been manifested. It's kind of like the the embryo cells, like the things that haven't become realized to the things that they're supposed to be. It's like the substance of the universe. It's like the bricks of the universe that haven't become a house yet. Am I? That's my understanding. It's like the the thing that the universe is like made upon. So all created beings are unmanifest before birth, manifest in life, and again unmanifest on death. So why grieve? Why grieve? It's just people dying, bro. It's just people dying. It's okay. Number 29 is saying, some see the soul as amazing, some describe it as amazing, and some hear of the soul as amazing. What the hell? While others, even on hearing, cannot understand it at all. You just don't get it, bro. It's just don't get it. Okay, let's continue. Oh, Arjun, the soul that dwells within the body is immoral. Therefore, you should not mourn for anybody. God damn it. This Krishna keeps repeating himself. Brevity. I thought God's understood that. Uh, number 31 is saying, besides, guys, you cannot, the Hindus in the live chat, do not ever criticize me again. For not getting to the point when this is your God. Okay? This is your God. He just repeated himself a gazillion times. So you have you are in no position at getting upset about me not even getting into the point. Okay. Be okay. Besides considering your duty as a warrior, I told you guys this is because it's a warrior cast. You just go stabby stabby, you don't question things, okay. So Krishna is saying, considering your duty as a warrior, you should not waver. Indeed, for a warrior, there is no better engagement than fighting for upholding of righteousness. Oh, by the way, guys. By the way. They, so he, here's the thing. This is what the Hindus will jump on. Okay? They're like, they will ignore. They, they tell us why we're ignoring the context. Some Hindus. Some Hindus. Okay? They say we ignore the Look, look at this righteousness. Okay? Katie, tell me if I'm wrong about this, okay? They ignore everything we just read about people dying is not important because their souls will live on, okay? And they will jump on the tr English translation of the Gita, even though they tell us that we don't understand shit because we're not we're reading the translations and translations could be misleading. They will use the misleading translation here to say like, oh, just ignore everything you just right now because this shows that killing is only okay if you're upholding righteousness. This is a trick. Be careful. This upholding righteousness is what in Islam we call Surat al-Mustaqim, which is righteousness in the different what defined by Hinduism, it's righteousness as in following Dharma. Okay, exactly. Here, Katie is Katie saying the Sanskrit word used in place of righteousness is oh my god, um, what okay, something Dharma. I see so something. SVA Dharma, which means Dharma of self. This is following Dharma. This is the don't so this is the trick. They're like, we don't understand Gita because we're reading the translation, and the translation could be misleading. Yet they use it mis the, the misleading of the translation for us to, to trick us to say that this means war is not justified unless it's righteous. They don't tell you that this righteousness. It's just it just means following Dharma, following your role in the universe, which as a warrior means stabby stabby 
for, uh, participating in war regardless of the results. And they spell it out for you that regardless of the results is the key principle here. It's, a, it's a, one of the main factors is that you have you have no reason as a warrior to be concerned about the justification of this war or the results of this war. You just follow orders. You just do your duty. And as a warrior, you kill. Don't let them tell you that this righteousness here means that you only have to do war if it's righteous because dharma means just following the way following the path that you have been ordered to do so this is misleading here when they tell you that this means uh, righteousness Um, yeah, let me read this one. Katie saying a broken down translation would be upholding of your own religious duty. Exactly. So the righteousness doesn't mean that. Oh, if the if the other side is not in the right is not in the right, and you're in the right, therefore you should go. You could do war. That's not what this means here. This just means follow what you're ordered to do by Dharma. Do your duty. That's what this means here. Do your religious duty. Fulfill your role in the universe. In fact, the other warriors on that side, they should also be fighting you. There is no right or wrong here. There is no right side of the army and wrong side of the army. The warriors on that other side of the army, they should also follow. The, they, them telling your side is also them fulfilling their duty because they're warrior cast in their, uh, on the other side. Um, I'm referring to this here I'm not going to go through the details about the Surat al -Musarim. it's just like the right path in Islam or in Hinduism or right is what they define it to be that's what I'm, my point here is but we're not going to go towards discussing that right now Um, Katie is saying you can even open the verse and okay, yeah, actually, let's do that because this is important. Because this is this righteous, th th this English translation is the one of the main um ways for Hindu apologists to tell you that this all, you have completely misunderstood uh, the Gita because they refer to the English translation here. Do not let them trick you with that, okay? So, here's the we were looking at verse. 31 and this is the Sanskrit version of verse 31 All right, so here's righteousness there you go look at this look at this Katie was right you don't you get the look at this right this is the word here right Oh yeah, and the self or the self, the first world. Yeah, there. Yes, yeah, the Dharma. Look. Swadhar Swadharma is like one's duty in accordance with the the Vedas. This is not about being ex saying that war is excusable if you're if if it's justified, if they're the bad guys and you're the good guys. This is about fulfilling your religious duty as a warrior. Or as whatever cast you're in. Unbelievable. So again, this you, you have to remind you have to remember this, okay? You have to remember this because they will use this as a way to like they will ignore everything else we read re, we just read, and they will use this as a way to suggest that this whole thing is misunderstood. It, they say like you know how Muslim uh, apologists just hang on, like take everything out of context, and they just focus on one word. And you're like, oh, look, this, this specifically says that war is only acceptable in this situation. And they ignore the entire story and the entire context. That's what Hindu apologists would do. They would just hang everything on this word here. So be careful with that excuse. We just read the rest of it. We just saw what the excuse was for killing because people just don't die. Their souls will live on. So killing is okay. That's what they were saying. Again, YouTube, that's not what I'm saying. That's what, uh, uh, that's what uh, Geet, the Gita is saying. So 32, 
Happy are the warriors to whom such opportunities to defend righteousness. Again, this is dharma, not actual righteousness. Come, uh, uh, come, unsought, right? Opening for them the stairway to the celestial abodes. So you're like, you should be happy for this opportunity. If, however, you refuse to fight this righteous war, abandoning your societal duty, see, society, social duty and reputation, you will certainly in, uh, incur sin. Like basically, if you don't kill people, that would be a sin because you're not following your duty. People will speak of you as a coward and a deserter for a respectable person. Infamy is worse than death. You're like, dude, you know, your reputation. You have a reputation to uphold. Stop being such a pussy, bro. Don't go kill people. You have a reputation to uphold. Like, like look at this. He's like, guys, imagine people saying, like, you shouldn't care about what other people think of you. Like, you should just be accepting yourself. Do what the right thing. Guys, if somebody told you the, that this is wise to say, like, you should do the right thing regardless of what, are, what others think, right? Now you're like, if you think something is right, do it, even if people will look down upon you for doing it. You would think that would be a wise thing to say. Krishna is arguing the exact opposite. He's like, dude, think of what people would say. Are you not embarrassed? The shame. If you don't kill people, people will speak of you ill. The people will be like, you, you they will laugh at you. Like <laughs> the warrior who abandoned battle. You would think a script a scripture that is supposed to be wise and you know giving you more moral lessons that as, as people will celebrate would be like. Even if the whole world looked down upon you, if it's something right, you should do it. No, this this guy Krishna is saying the opposite. I'm like you should do it. <laughs> people, uh, do you know? Do you know what people are gonna say if you don't go kill your own family? Oh my God, I'm a god. I've seen what they will say. Trust me, you don't want to know. Death, death would be better than what people are gonna say. Ooh, it's oh my God. I'm just listening to this other guy saying something in the future about you. Ouch, ouch, the shame, the shame. If I would were you, I would rather die. Jesus Christ, man, shame. <laughs> the great generals who hold you in high esteem will think that you fled from the battlefield out of fear and thus will lose their respect for you. Guys, look at this, the shame and guilt. Guys, in Islam and Christianity, they're trying to use the power of shame so that we don't masturbate, okay? In Hinduism, they use the power of guilt and shame so you go commit mass murder. <laughs> like, you, yeah, it's embarrassing. Oh, my God, you didn't kill your own family. How embarrassing. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's so embarrassing. Uh, okay, 36 saying, your enemies will defame and humiliate you with unkind words. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this, is, this is, this is, oh, my God. This is so abusive. This is so abusive. Like, you're using somebody's shame, like, self sense of self-worth <laughs> to, to make them go commit murder. They're like, Hey, dude, if you don't kill your brothers, people will speak unkind words of you. What happened to sticks and bones? <laughs> like, words will never hurt me. What happened here? Like, honestly, if you care about your family, would it be like, who? Like, Azure, wouldn't, shouldn't he set up? Like, who? I don't give a fuck about unkind words. This is my family. <laughs> like, Christian's like, dude, kill your family. They're going to speak unkind words if you don't kill your family. <laughs> disparaging your might like this is guys i am convinced i used to be against toxic uh, like using words like toxic masculinity i thought like that's a myth or, like toxic masculinity who's like this is like an attack by feminists on masculinity like i am I'm, I, masculinity is not bad who the fucking hell why are you attacking our masculinity it's completely okay be masculine all you want but now i get it <laughs> <laughs> now I get it. Like, oh my, like, if you don't, like, hey, you're a warrior. Hooga booga, go kill. Be a man. What is this weak, pathetic shit I'm saying? Like, come on, pick, get up your knees, Arjun. 
Look at this. Like, people are, you know, this is humiliating. You don't want to kill, look at this pussy doesn't want to kill his own family. Embarrassing. Be a man. Be strong. Be tough. Rawr. Kill. 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 Go. Do you know what people are going to say? Are you not embarrassed? I would rather die than be that pathetic as you are, June. Come on. Come on, man. Thirty-seven. If you fight, you will either be slain on the battlefield and go to the celestial abode, abode, or you will gain victory and enjoy the kingdom on earth. Didn't Arjun just say that he doesn't care about victory on this earth if he kills his own family? And Krishna is like tempting him to go kill based on the specific things that Arjun said that it doesn't matter. Like Arjun said, like I don't, you know, if I kill my family. The celestial abodes will be tainted with blood. And victory and getting the kingdom of earth, getting that also will be tainted with blood. And it's not going to be worth it. Okay? So literally after Arjun said that these getting celestial powers or getting the kingdom on, on, in, on earth and being victorious is not going to be as good enough for it to be worth killing your family. Right after saying that, Krishna is promising him tempting him to go kill his family with the very temptation that he said it's not going to be worth it. But, yeah. All right. I'm going to time out anybody from now on, anybody that keeps telling me to say go on reading, I'm going to put them on timeout because you're just wasting my time because you're here for commentary. So Somu on timeout and this other guy also, AB also on timeout. Okay. So if you keep telling me to keep on reading, you could go just read the Gita from top to uh, bottom without any uh, uh, any commentary for myself. So if you're distracting me from actually reading this, keep telling me to move on reading, you're going to get a timeout, okay? Um, okay, number 38. Oh, here. Guys, if you thought I was, like, exaggerating when I said that Krishna was saying that fight for just for the sake of duty, that you don't need any other excuses that that was like an interpretation that I was taking out of context. I was coming up with conclusions that Gita is not necessarily saying. Krishna is like on my side. He's like, let me know. Let me make this clear. You just, like, let me just make this absolutely clear so there's no ambiguity here. And if there is any ambiguity, it's because you don't have your third eye. Um, so Krishna is saying, fight for the sake of duty. Duty, that's all you need to care about. Treating alike happiness and distress Loss and gain, victory and de defeat. Yeah, no, no, the consequences do not matter. No utilitarian calculation matters. Duty, duty, uh, appeal to duty. Okay, it's, it's a virtue of itself to go kill. The results are irrelevant. That's what he's saying. This is so d dangerous. This is the greatest attack on utilitarian ethics I've ever seen. Saying like because even people who do virtue ethics, they do not say that the consequences matter, don't matter at all. Because even people who do virtue ethics, they say like these virtues are these virtues are good because of the consequences of accepting this virtue. So there's they're doing a utilitarian calculation in a sneaky way. They're technically utilitarians. But the Gita is making a case, making a philosophical case for you not to have to that that there's nothing that could be more irrelevant than the consequences of your actions. The consequences of your actions should not be at any point part of your calculation of what you do. It's the dharma, it's the way, it's your duty, you do it. Yeah, basically, essentially treating him like a slave. So liberal Hindu is saying, I know that even after the uh, Mahabharata, see, if you say slowly, you can read it actually, there is some justification for the war in the in Old Testament or in the Quran, civilians were killed for no reason. Um, so the justifications in the rest of the scripture, liberal Hindu, is not made specific, is it made by Krishna? Because Krishna himself, because... 
the the entire stories in the Mahabharata is many people making many arguments for many different things, right? But what you see in the Gita is the divine argument for it is for you not to worry about the consequences. I haven't read the rest of the Dharma, but you can see here that the consequences are irrelevant, at least according to the, uh, to Krishna, okay? When you say in the Old Testament, in the Quran, the people were killed for no reason, I don't see any, I haven't, I, I've read the Bible, I've read the Quran, uh, I haven't seen anywhere in the Bible. I mean, again, I'm not endorsing the killing in the Bible and the Quran. They're absolutely barbaric and inhuman and war crimes. But there are always a reason. They, they give you a reason. Like, tell me where in the Bible or the Quran tells, tells you to kill without reason. Again, this is not a justification of it. Like, they are horrible. Oh, there. Thank you, Ghazan. This is easier to read. Mahabharat. Hey, this is the superiority of the other languages, like the at least Arabic um, way of writing things are so much easier to read. Or maybe that's just my, uh, yeah. Mahabharat. 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 Thank you, guys. That's very helpful. Tagia confirmed, by the way. Wait, did it, didn't somebody just accuse me of tahiyya? Just Yeah, there you go. Exactly. This was before reading the Arabic text. This person is accusing me of tahiyya. Now that I tell you that this is an easier re way to read things, then tahiyya is just transparent. In a civilized world, nobody should follow Gita for their world. Nobody should follow any scripture. Okay, let's go. Let's continue. Did we read this one completely? Okay, yeah. For the sake of duty, treating like, okay, fulfilling your responsibility is the way you will never incur a sin if you just follow the way. Just follow the way. It's the way. How do you read this? He, he, I'm not going to read it. So Krishna is saying, I have explained to you. Oh, my God. Anyways, I think we should end this here. We've already been past two hours. So, yeah, we just confirmed everybody that um, the Gita is a manual for mass slaughter. Confirmed. I win. Hinduism is scripturally seems to be the most violent religion on the planet. I'm happy to change my opinion on this, but right now, this is my position. Uh, I have never seen a more direct excuse for mass slaughter in any scripture in my life. Um, so there's that. Um, if you disagree, please leave your wrong opinions in the comment section for me to evaluate and maybe change my mind. Yeah. Yeah, guys, I know, like, if you're, if you're going to tell me that Muhammad actually killed more people and Islam is responsible for more murders, I completely agree. Like, effectively, the position of scripture in Islam makes the, the relationship that scripture has in Islam on people's um, actions is somewhat more direct, which makes Islam a more destructive religion. But that's because of the relationship between actions and the scriptures in Islam. Okay, I'm strictly speaking uh, speaking uh, from a purely uh, scriptural perspective, um, independent from how much that how much of an effect it has on people's actions. If you're purely looking at what the scripture is saying, then it doesn't get more violent than the Gita. It doesn't get more destructive, more insanely pro-murder, pro-mass uh, massacre than the Gita. Okay? Only, but only if you look at that, uh, look at it in such a vacuum, independent from how, how it affects people. But if you actually look at how it does affect people and how it makes world changes, um, yeah, Islam is number one. Right? Um, that could, that could, um, I wonder though, um, how the Gita would have had an influence on people's life 
if the religion of the Arabs were a scripture with the Gita and the religion of the Hindus, people living in modern day India was Islam, right? Because the position of India globally, um, when it, if you look at history, India is very, very naturally rich. And that has made it become a target historically. Okay. So you know how the Middle East became a target in, in the in the past hundred years because of oil, right? So you see, like imperial forces became very focused on the Middle East because of its natural resources. So it Middle East became a target of imperial forces ever since black money started just pouring out of the goddamn ground, right? Um, India was the Middle East of ancient history because it was extremely rich uh, with natural resources. So it became a target of imperial forces throughout ancient times. Um, and the, most, the two most fa recent and famous one being the Arab Empire and the British Empire, okay? You can see, like, even in modern history, you know, before the 1900s, um, a lot of British, a lot of the British foreign policy was focused on defending India as its position, right? Like, India became a target because how 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 much wealthy it was, right? Um, so uh, the Arabs wanted it, the British wanted it, the Persians wanted it because it just had so much to offer, right? Given how, given that role of India in history. It made it so that they were the oppressee rather than the oppressors. Like nat the, naturally, they were always being attacked, and they were always being oppressed. They were always being acted upon, rather than them ever being in a position to act upon other nations. They never were the aggressors to other nations. They were aggressors towards each other, but they never came out of India. They were they weren't empires coming out of India invading other peoples. There were empires going to India to invade India. Okay, so. Given that context of the history of India, they never had the role of being being in a position to go and using maybe their religion to be like, oh, it's okay that we're killing these people, right? Um, I mean, not to the extent, but if you look at the Arabs, for example, uh, on the other hand, they came out of a place that had nothing, right? They were, their economy, like they were literally in the middle of a desert, right? So... Their wealth was heavily reliant on them going after other people, right? In the, the, so it's not like so we have to be careful. Like a lot of like bigots try to make racial essentialism as a way to be like, oh, the Arabs did this, but the Hindus didn't do this. This must be that means that these people are naturally this, or that people those people are naturally that, which is not the case. It just happens so that if you are an empire growing out of a place that has nothing, your entire foundational philosophy will become founded on um, enriching your empire by capturing other people's wealth. Like that will be your genesis and that will be your philosophy will be based upon that, right? And if you are a group of people that is founded upon a, 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 a land that it has everything and is rich Inherently, you would be the people who would have to defend yourself against others, and other people are trying to capture you. Okay, so what I'm I'm wondering if the Gitas were the religion of the Arabs coming out of Arabia, these verses will be not only scripturally very violent, but these scripture would be also very violent in effect. In the world, you will see the violent nature of them in practice. If historically the Arabs' religion was based on the Gita, you will see them making a lot of use of these verses, I would suspect. This is just a guesswork. I don't know if this is true. That's my um, guess. I don't know if that's correct. You could, you could argue for or against that. Um, you could tell me uh, what do you think in the background? Oh my god, look at this guy. 
you guys have no academic background, so you're not qualified to even speak about religion. Yes, guys. If we read in scripture that it's okay to kill people because their souls will live on, you have to be a scholar. You have to have like between 8 to 11 PhDs to be like, that's not right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's not okay. Hmm. Lord Krishna, in the most popular sacred scripture of Hindus, is telling you that killing people is not an issue because their souls will live on. And you should murder people because it's your duty, regardless of consequences. And it makes it very plainly clear to you that this is what is teaching. But you are in no position, none of you are in any position to be like, dude, bro, no. Because you need to be a scholar to be able to tell that. Apparently, apparently. Us non-scholars cannot understand that mass massacring your own family is okay because it's dharma. It's the way. It is the way. Anyways. It doesn't matter which... Okay, so I'm not talking about Hinduism. I'm Muslim, and your audience is going bananas. Well, you're going bananas because you're an idiot, because you don't understand that we're talking about fairy tales, and fairy tales, you don't need academ academic qualifications to be able to, like, you're literally like, hey, Harry Potter is real. You can't, you have to be a scholar to understand that why Hogwarts is a real place. Like, I'm sorry, you are at a child's level understanding of how anything works, and you're criticizing people for not being scholars, okay? So there's that. Okay, guys, I'm going to go. Yes, I know empires came out of India. There are many empires in the history of India, but not empires that came out and like, show me the empires that, in, that took over the Persian Empire out of India, okay? There were empires, there were local empires in India, but they didn't go beyond India. I know that. They didn't, there's no, we have Persians invading India. We have the British invading India. We have the Arab invading India. Show me where Indian, uh, the empires out of India took over the Persian Empire. Show me that. Did they do that? They didn't do that. So that's what I'm referring to. Jeez. They didn't go, they didn't go out of that region and invade other people. And, and it's not because no, I'm not saying they were weak. It's just it's a natural, it's the it's the impact of being having naturally rich. It just makes you a target. It makes it, it's just that's how it's that's what happens. Like, oh, look at this idiot. Stop running away and debate Ali Dawa Armin. I invited Ali Dawa to a debate. He didn't respond. So maybe you should act. <laughs> look at this idiot. You have not. I've never been invited by Ali Dawa to a debate. I invited Ali Dawa to a debate. He didn't. He didn't respond to me. He even noticed. He said, like, maybe I will consider it. And then he didn't continue. I, I, I messaged him, I PM'd him on my Twitter, personal Twitter account, and he didn't respond. So maybe, like, running away. Look how stupid you are, peaceful guy. Stop running away. Look how stupid you look. Everybody point at peaceful guy and laugh at him. I invited him. He didn't respond. I am actually, I challenged him to a debate. Stop running away. Tell Ali Dawa to not stop running away. Like they ruled Southeast Asia. Well, South A Southeast Asia is where where they're at. Yeah, they ruled the corners of the places that they're at. Yeah, dude, I literally just told you that I invited him and he didn't respond. You're just like trolling now. You're an you're either an idiot or a troll. I don't know which one is worse. Um, oh my God, Hassan, don't talk about these things. People are going to take it seriously. Okay, so I, okay, fine, fine. I'll give you okay. Hindus and Buddhists ruled Indonesia and Malaysia. Fine, you ruled over a, a couple of lands that didn't have any major kingdoms. You had you literally managed to capture places where people had just huts and people were living 
in like local tribes, okay? Like this is like weird flex, but but okay. Like Indonesia and Malaysia, like people were like people were like throwing stones at each other, and you had like you had people on with armies, and you went and took over them. Like, I mean, it wasn't you, but come on. Like when we say like when Alexander invaded like per ancient you know, Persia, the Persian Empire, there's like one empire just swallowing another empire. Like you have like the Greek Empire of the Macedonians, like just li literally attack a country with a standing army, with people on horses, with like with an, with an empire with a budget and gold and everything and a bureaucracy and everything. And Alexander came and like, whoop, it's mine now. When you see the Mongols coming out and invade, like attacking China, that's like this is the Chinese Empire, and somebody's like with every, with all its government and all its emperors and everything, and they're like Mongols. I'm like, yeah, this is ours now. Okay, that is taking over. Okay, when you go when you go and say like, hey, there's people in a hut, and just like they're just like they're throwing stones at each other, and you have an army and you take over that. That's not like that's not that's not empire built. Yeah, okay. I mean, okay, that's. Yeah, okay. You 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 took over, but it's not the same thing. Anyways. Okay, guys. I'm going to go. Um thank you for being here. This was fun. I had fun going over this and we're going to do more a lot more of this make sure you like before you leave do not leave before you like or dislike okay this is your duty it's, it's dharma it is dharma it is the way okay it's within the fabric of the universe it's dharma for you to like and subscribe and hit the bell button all three of them before you, you go okay so do it if you want the universe to be in balance you if you want things to be in the natural balance as all things should be make sure you do your um, righteous duty and like this video thank you everyone and talk to you guys later bye bye